Madura Gatri, sweet limbed girl, when will my hair stand on end of ecstasy? When cloves and guvac into your lotus like mouth. I repeat the verse. <laughs> oh, Madura Gatri, sweet limbed girl, when will my hair stand on end of ecstasy? When I place a battle leaf with camphor, chatechu, cloves, and guvac into your lotus like mouth. Notes In Svarupa Vesha, Sri Raghunatha Dasa has a wonderful relish of devotional service. Just as a conditioned soul is in Maya while sleeping, dreaming, and being awake, the devotee is always absorbed in bhajan while sleeping, dreaming, and being awake. Bhajan means keeping the mind fixed and attracted. The mind should be poured into the Yugala Kishora. Let my mind and body dwell in Radha and Krishna's lotus feet. And let all my material desires go far away. Radhe. You ask me to support you today, little. So here we can already stop and share a little. But I am also asking Jayananda Maharaj and Goranga Sundara Tarun Baba Suniti to share with us also. So he has said that the mind should be fixed and attracted. So Gurudev explain all this, why we are chanting. To keep the mind fixed. Prabhupada teaching we should chant 24-7 all the time. Never leave chanting. That the mind always can be fixed in one point. And the mind should be poured into the Yuga Lakisho. So in chanting it means that we not just chant mechanically like a robot or like a machine. Chanting is also called smarana. It's not kirtan. It's part of smaran, meaning that while chanting, we remember. What we remember? We remember the Yuga Lakisho, their forms, their qualities, and their pastime. 
रूपा गुना लीला एंड वन टाइम आई लिसन लाइक ए टेक्निक ऑफ चैंटिंग Radha Rani, she has a beautiful braid, and the braid is you take one part of the hair and have a second part, and then you make the braid. <laughs> so enchanting that also can mean that on the one side we put our mind. into the mantra and on the other hand we put the mantra in our mind and then we put the mind in the mantra and the mantra in our mind so making a braid of radharani while chanting <clears throat> yeah and the mind and the body should dwell in them in the lotus feet and then let all my material desires go far away i learned something about bhagavad gita i listen that bhakti helps us to attach to radha moon our mind should dwell in the lotus feet of them but then there is also other part called dhyana and dhyana can help us also to detach from material but he has written first that our mind and body should dwell in them so the focus is on our attachment to radha moon the focus is not to detach from material world the focus is the attachment to radha moon but there is a part of knowledge that can help us to detach from material world let us thinking the second part of the sentence that let go all material desire i also remember in vrindavan there's famous t-shirt in the market you can buy that and there is written never forget krishna always remember krishna <laughs> maybe many of you they see that t-shirt before you can see it now and i was thinking what is meaning of that probably is spoken by prabhu and then some thoughts coming to me i was thinking the first instruction is never forget krishna in our case rather but not possible for us. if you never forget radha rani that is a level of rati strong attachment or even higher bhava bhakti 
naturally, you, your mind is always attached to Radharani. You never forget Radharani. That is the first instruction. But for me and my stage, not possible to do that. So for me, a second instruction, always remember Radharani. So I try not to forget, but I forget. So then I remember. I forget again, I remember. So the first instruction is like Bhava Bhakti. Second instruction is Sadhana Bhakti. We practice. We try always to remember. And we have strong hope that in the future, we will never forget. Whatever. But now our practice is to remember. That I want to share. Right Beautiful. So this Baba mentioned uh, Bhajan means keeping the mind fixed and attracted. Already Gora Chandra uh, explained. And I was reading in Radhara Sasnanidi. And then Anandas Bhavaj Maharaj said, we are chanting using Mara. Mara means Ma means wells. La means giver, giving. So we are chanting. So that wells is giving or giving or was given. <coughs> what kind of wells is there? As this Baba say, let my mind and body dwell in Radha and Mohan's lotus feet. So Lada, the Radha Mohan's lotus feet is wells. Also, Bhajan means chanting and meditation. Mantra means also, that is also wells. Because name of Radha and Mohan is as good as Radha Mohan, or even more merciful than Radha Mohan. So this is uh, Baba explained the, the essence of our bhajan and Gora Chandra explain bhakti is, bhakti has many principles, many rules and regulations, but the Prabhupada or maybe Rupa Gosai mentioned all two, every principle is come to this two point. Don't forget Krishna and always remember Krishna. Of course, in our case, this Krishna means Radha included. So this uh, Gora Chandra remind us Bhakti's most important <laughs> principle. Also, Gurudeva's teaching is same. How to fix mind one study Bab. This is very beautiful. Rade, rade. Let my mind and body dwell in Radha and Krishna's lotus feet. And let all my material desires Go far away. Shri 
Tripada Lila Shuka, being attracted to Krishna's sweetness, said in Sri Krishna Kanamrita, May my mind be immersed in the flood of bliss, Sri Krishna, that always increases the ocean of intoxication, intoxicating sweetness and causes great waves in that ocean, whose cool adolescent dress is a collection of erotic ornaments and whose lovely moon-like face is beautified by a soft smile. Radhe Radhe Gurudev, nice that you're with us, thank you. <laughs> How will the mind ever deviate after it was immersed in an ocean of rasa? Absorption in Swamini's maid service is even deeper. I am a maid servant of she whose form, qualities, and sweetness defeat even Govindas. What can Maya do to me then? When by continuously performing bhajan, the mind becomes rasika, then the devotee becomes as attached and accustomed to his beloved deity as a conditioned soul is to his wife and children or husband. So, by continuously practicing, the mind will become rasic. Meaning our mind now is not rasika. <laughs> but how it can become rasik? By Sadhu Sangha, we need association of Rasika Vaishnava. So sometimes we think that we have to see Gurudev and sit with him and listen from him directly. Yes, that is the best. That is important to go Vrindavan and meet Guru. Be in this vibration, listen from him. But it's not always possible. So there must be other way also to have association. And we have this good luck that Guru Dev inspired the devotees to have this Zoom meeting. This is also Sadhism. By reading these books of Anantara's body, we have very powerful Sangha. We have Sangha with Raghunath Das Kusvami. It's his feelings his realizations, he share with them. We have Sangha with Anantara's Bhavajan, direct, <laughs> also 
also his words, his realizations, his mood is there. It's very important to understand that this is also sadhu sang. Now, direct by conscious listening, we have that association. And then there's the process how the mind will become rasic. The different stages of bhakti, starting with some shraddha and then sadhu sangha. And we start practicing bhakti, bhajana kriya. Then purification will happen, anatas will go. And then our faith is growing, mishra will be there. And then real taste and attachment will come. So then the mind will become passive. Deeply attached now, not going other place anymore. Like a conditioned soul is attached to wife and children. It's natural. It's natural attachment to your child. Mother cannot think outside of the child. So when that stage of real taste and strong attachment is coming, then our mind is rising. <clears throat> yeah. That's why the Goswamis say we want sasanga bhajan, worship with attachment to the deity. Anasanga bhajan, worship without attachment to the deity, won't do. It is my duty to chant the holy name a fixed number of times. That's why I do it. But I don't relish the sweetness of the name. Mahaprabhu could not even pronounce the word Jagannatha when he was in ecstasy while dancing in the Rata Yatra. Jag Jaja Gaga, Jaja Gaga, Gadgada Vachana, Chaitam Charitamrita. He was saying, Jaja Gaga, Jaja Gaga, with faltering voice. Then the Lord relished Pratipadam. Punamrita Svadanam, the full nectar at every step. Srila Dasa Goswami has said, Oh, my tongue suffering from this thirst. Please mix the delicious, fresh, enchanting nectar of the name Radha with the wonderfully sweet condensed milk of the name Krishna. 
add the fragrant, delightful eyes of pure, passionate love and drink this charming drink at every moment. I think here we have a very, very sweet explanation of Mahamantra. The name of Radharani <laughs> mixed with the name of Krishna and then Add the fragrant, delightful eyes of pure, passionate love. I think this is Rama. No? You have Hare Krishna and Rama. You have the sweetness of Radharani and you have Krishna, Hare Krishna. And you have the passionate love of them in Rama. Gurudev explained, Rameti Ram. They're always together and strongly embraced because of their passionate love for each other. So, Maha Mantra is like this. Maybe you can read again my Shakti. Yes. That's so sweet. It's a um, cocktail of love. <laughs> oh, my tongue suffering from thirst. Please mix a delicious, fresh, enchanting nectar of the name Radha with the wonderfully sweet condensed milk of the name Krishna. Add the fragrant, delightful eyes of pure, passionate love and drink this charming drink at every moment. also reminds me of Mahaprabhu. We just listen in front of Jaga, Jagannath. He cannot even speak out of ecstasy. But then she checks Shastaka. He's saying also, oh, second slope. I have no taste for chanting. I'm so unfortunate. Everything is there in the name. Mahaprabhu saying, you put, you invested all your energies inside this name, but I'm so unfortunate that I have no taste. So everything is in the name. Guna, Rupa, Lila, everything is inside of this moment. The mood is there. But we have no taste. But Mahaprabhu, when he praying like this, also in the fourth sloka, Naranam Najanam Nasundari, I don't want this and that in this world. My only desire is to be your servant, life after life, speaking like a conditioned soul. So his feelings are fake. Or is it real? <laughs> he has that experience thinking of himself like a conditioned soul. Oh, I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I only want your service. 
life after life, birth after birth. If his feelings are real, also in the second sloka, oh, I have no taste. <laughs> Everything is there, but I have no taste. I'm desperate. Yes, please. I'm here. So, he experienced all that. And it's so amazing. In the book of Anantadas Babaji, explaining to us the something very beautiful is mentioned about Mahaprabhu. <laughs> he came down. the stairs of mercy coming to our level, experience himself to be a sadhak, thinking of himself to be a conditioned soul. So then Baba writing something so beautiful that God he become great when he comes down on the level of a conditioned soul. That makes his godhood great. <laughs> like in Vrindavan, he playing like a human being. Gurudev always explained that makes him supreme because he become normal. He come down from being the God. He play like a human being, like a friend, like a son. That makes God great. And in Gauralila, even more, Being like a sadhaka, like a conditioned soul in this world. Amazing. <laughs> so Anantaras, Bhavai, so sweet words writing there. Then same time he say, the jiva becomes successful if it becomes divine. No? God becomes success, great, when he become like human and the conditioned soul become great, Mahatma, <laughs> Mahatma, when he, the soul becomes divine. It's like opposite. No? <laughs> the greatness of God, he become normal. The greatness of the soul become divine. So beautiful. Anantara's Bhagavad Gita. Can I little bit add there? So Mahaprabhu was saying, I have no taste. And this is, I think, this is the mood of Srimati Radharani. Because Radharani say, I don't have any love for Krishna. He has most qualified person. He has Mahababa, Chintamani. All love come from her. But uh, Radharani is saying, I don't have any love for Krishna. This Radharani, so that means uh, I feel someone who has love, someone who has prema, does not say, oh, I have prema. No. Someone who has prema. No, I don't have any love for Krishna. So this is a nature of uh, a Vaishnava. And uh, this humbleness become uh, that person more great. So Mahaprabhu, I, so Gora Chandra saying, I don't have any taste. 
But that is Lada's feeling. And Premika Bhakta has also same feeling. If we see Anantasvaji Maharaj book, he says sometimes, no, I don't have, I'm such foreign condition, so he was saying sometimes. But that represents his greatness. Sometimes Gurudev say, Oh, I don't know anything. I don't have any love. But it shows us his greatness. Rade, rade. The Acharyas teach us that we must relish each item of devotion in this way. All other desires from sense gratification to liberation are all cheating. As long as such cheating propensities are there, there can be no pure devotion, let alone Raga Bhakti. Wow. Sri Lila Shuka has said in Krishna Kanamrita, O oh Lord, when our devotion to you becomes firm and fixed. We may be so fortunate to behold your divine adolescent form. Liberation will personally serve us with folded hands and re religiosity economic development and sense gratification will be waiting for the appropriate time to attend to us. A person in whose heart the splendor of Radharani's toenails awakens is fearless and undisturbed. Renunciation is there in the minds of those who are absorbed in these lotus feet. Everything is wasted for someone whose heart does not carry these lotus feet. But a devotee who, accept, who accepts the mood of the kinkaris will always experience the vicinity of these lotus feet. <clears throat> Here we're speaking about Dharma, Atta, Kama, Moksha. Yeah, and how All these purposes of life are serving to the fifth goal of life, to Prema. They become servants of Prema, of Bhakti.
no need for this effort of being religious. The highest religion is love of God. <laughs> this is the highest religion. You don't need to practice any other religion. The religion of love, that is our religion. And economic development. By surrendering to Radha Mohan, Krishna and Gita, he promised he take care of his devotee. We know that Radharani will take care of us. If we have desire to serve her, she will take responsibility to maintain us. We don't need independently make an effort. for our economic situation. Of course, that is also a process in our faith that we are maintained. And sense gratification means everyone want to experience happiness. Why people are going for sense gratification? Because they want to enjoy something. <laughs> want to feel kind of happiness. But now my happiness is inside. I relish the service and the connection with Swami. My material senses are satisfied in the service of Radharani. My spiritual senses become satisfied by serving Radharani. So no need to go independent for karma. <laughs> and moksha in the service of Radharani, we already are liberated. We don't care about liberation. I care about to be in her service, like Mahaprabhu praying, birth after birth. I don't care, I stay in samsara. I'm in the spiritual world or material world, I don't care. I only care to be in your service. Prema, Love, spiritual love, it's much higher than all the other purposes in life. And by that, Baba writing here, you become fearless and undisturbed. No fear. No money, no problem. <laughs> Nothing is a problem. If you are happy, inside happy, connected, you relish the sweetness of Radharani's service. Then why to bother about money, <laughs> about food? I'm sick, okay. We become fearless and understand and all purposes of life are fulfilled by becoming a Dasi of Shri Matura. Goranga Sundara, Tarun Baba, please share also a little. So I want to little share them. So Bhagatam mentioned 
I think second verse or third verse. Nigama Garpataro Garitam Param. Oh, so Bhagatam mentioned after finishing Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha, that person can taste this Bhagatam. So means, and Prabhupada mentioned, someone who has no envy, that person can taste. So he, it seems here, Baba also saying, if we want to lead that qualification is indirectly Baba want to say. Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha is all cheating, which Gora Chandra saying. For us, condition soul, it is very good thing. We want to be a good person. We want to be very rich. We want to satisfy our senses. Actually, it seems very good. But here Baba saying, all cheating. Because we cannot attain the lotus feet of Radha Mohan. Just Dharma. Arta, Kama, Moksha. So therefore, Baba is saying, as long as such cheating propensity are there, there can be no pure devotion, means no pure bhakti. So, and then what to do? We have so much desire, so much bad quality. Then what to do? Again, Shukadeva saying, I think, 10th canto, 31st chapter, maybe last part of verse. If we could hear, like Lasarira, or like Lhasa Pancha from Rashka Vaishnava. Means if we could hear from Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, Virapak Sumanjari, from Rashka Vaishnava, like Gurudev. Then slowly, slowly, this Baba enter, or Baba infuse our heart. And such Rashka Vaishnava's power, this, so Gora Chandra saying just a few minutes ago, we are associating Raghunath Das Goswami words. We are associating Anand Das Bhavaji Maharaj words. This is, this, their, their word is Mahabani. Golden words. We hope this, this word purify us and penetrating this Baba or infuse this Baba into our heart. So, this Baba's word is really Mahabani. That's I am feeling. Rade, rade. I just wanted to add, I'm sorry, forgive me, but uh, I'm not, I like what Gora Chanta was saying, but I have to say quite honestly, 
for some of us, I can at least speak only for me. Uh, it's wonderful for those who are safe and, you know, don't have to work or, or, or not have a full job or can use all the time in Bajan. But honestly speaking, it's not for all of us. So um, I think it's not it's nothing wrong with uh, having full time job and dedicating all the extra time and all the time for Bajan. And doing an honest job is also very important. So Arjuna, Krishna said to Arjuna, your duty is to fight. So I am happy for those who have no more duty in this world and who are free to do whatever they like. And I understand that finally and lastly, it's the mercy of Swamini and we should all always depend on Swamini. But for us, at least I can say the reality looks a little bit different. So... I have bills to pay, I have to work my job, I have to do some, some things in the material world. And, the, and the, the mission is to see this in the right context, to know that whatever comes to me is the mercy of Swamini, even if I do my daily job and I earn my money, not to be attached to that money and to somehow use it also in Krishna's service. But I just wanted to say this is very important also that many of us have a regular life and, uh, you know, have to, we have our duties also. I cannot sit down tomorrow morning and say, okay, I'm not going to school. I now fully depend on Swamini. So let's see what, uh, what my school says then. If I stay at home for two weeks and say, okay, I fully depend on Swamini. I, am, I don't need to work. I fulfill my I fulfill my duty. So it's not, I just wanted to say, please don't misunderstand me. It's not so easy. You know what I mean? So I think it is a balance between those who have achieved that beautiful goal, not having any duties anymore in this material world. Hooray and all glories to that. But some of us are still there. And at one time, we will also be free from our duty. But honestly speaking, I, I like my job and I like to be with the kids and I like to teach, but it is important to see it in the right context. My Gurudev never told me to stop working and to give up everything. So he said the consciousness is very important. You always see yourself as a servant of Swamini, even if I teach third graders, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, as an example of from my position. I just wanted to add that. I'm sorry if I say something wrong. Jai Radhe. Everything fine, Tarun Mahal. You see, you? Sadhu Maharaj, Gurudev, no one else teaching like him that we have to be balanced and material. This is foundation. When I was connected with Iskon, I listened many times, give up everything, everything is Maya, just surrender like this. Gurudev totally opposite, always teaching us. We have to balance material life. We have to take your responsibility and be a normal person in this world. But keep the goal in the mind. No? That is the goal. When I listen about Leela of Srivas Thakur, <laughs> Mahaprabhu coming to him, asking him, My dear Srivas, I have one question. You have a big family. How you maintain that? <laughs> and he made like this three times, no? <laughs> what is what is meaning? And Srivas explain, oh I am only doing my bhajan. I'm only chanting. So one day there is no food. I'm thinking, oh today Krishna wants that I'm fasting. Very good. <laughs> So then, after two days, no food coming. And I'm thinking, oh, today Krishna wants to give me special mercy. 
Not only one day fasting, two days fasting. So then, three times, then Sri Vartin, oh. Maybe Krishna don't want to give me food. So I will jump in the Ganga and die. <laughs> I should die now. <laughs> then Mahaprabhu stopped him and said, no, 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 no. no. You have so much faith. You will never be become poor. Lakshmi will become pure, poor maybe in the future, but you never will become poor. I will keep you. I will maintain you. Because you have so much faith and so much trust. Of course, this is not our level. But it's good to listen to the examples of the great souls who are fully surrendered and how Krishna, how Radharani take responsibility to give everything what they need. But that is the, the ideal, no? that is the goal. But we have to see where we are and um, do our normal life, maintain ourselves, being normal in this world. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Also, like uh, many of Mahaprabhu's associates, also Grihasta, and uh, even single person, like uh, Korobecha Suridara, they are. Every day they are selling some kind of banana leaves, banana made some cups or something. And then little bit money he made it. And uh, he worship Ganga and the Sharagram and etc. Even Raman Daya, even Raman Daya was kind of, what do you say, big person. Like, uh, what is say uh, in English, beyond the mayor, like a very big kind of magistrate. I don't know what you say in English, big person who can manage all the area. So, but, uh, so he was working many years. I don't know how many, <laughs> but <laughs> his case is different. His case was he, Mahaprabhu requested him. Please live with me and we can discuss Harikata. And then he consult Prata Parodara Maharaj. And then Prata Parodara Maharaj gave some, what say, some money for to do this. After retirement, you know, usually company gave quite a big money. So this kind of money Raman Raya got from Prata Parodara Maharaj. So, and he did. Every person and uh, every every person has a different and the Tarun Baba is saying the right. We have to do our duty. And if Radharani give us some mercy, we can have more time for bhajan. But actually bhajan means consciousness. Tarun Baba is saying right. Bhajan is consciousness. So whatever we do, if we don't forget, we are Radha Dasi. If we stay in our Swarupa consciousness, then whatever we do is spiritual. And uh, so most of us, we have to do some duty in this material world. Even I remember Goparabhata Goswami want to, want to join Mahaprabhu. But, uh, I think Goparabhata, or maybe Raghunath Bhatta. But, uh, their, his parent also devotee and very old. And Mahaprabhu told him, please take care of your parents because your parents is, is devotee. Please take care. And after, Take care and uh, 
the duty finished, then please join me. Like Mahaprabhu saying. So Tarun Baba remind us our duty in this material world and Gora Chandra remind us Guru Dev's teaching how to balance in this material world to, to, to remember we are Radha Dasi or we are servant of Radha Mohan. Thank you very much. Goravani, <laughs> please share. <laughs> yeah, our Goravani is waiting. Rade, Rade, can you hear me? Yes. Yes? Okay. I was just thinking about a story which happened last time when we fly back, when we fly back from uh, Brindavan. And uh, the impact actually Gurudev's teachings have also, he was not there in this moment. We met a person at the airport. It was a, a monk. It was a monk from uh, Buddhism. And we were talking shortly because we met on, the, um, on a shop where you could get some coffee. So we were talking a little bit. And then he was talking about renouncement. A bhajan, which is meant for renounce. And after some time, I just said, you know, oh, a bhajan is to develop the attachment, not detachment. And he was completely surprised. He was shocked. He was completely shocked and looking in our face if we mean that really, you know, it's really, he said that and he's not laughing. And then after a moment, he was like thinking shortly and yes, this is the perfect point. The whole world is talking about renouncement. We need attachment. Yes. And in this moment, we had new friends at the airport. And he was searching for the bread, for the Buddhist bread, and wanted to share that bread with us, actually. And then we took some prasadam and we shared. So it was just a little story. I remembered when you were just exchanging here. So here, it's a, a whole spiritual world now. Devotees come and go and it's uh, it's an amazing, uh, inspiring uh, vibration here. So, thank you very much for sharing. Jai Shri Radhe. So beautiful to listen to all of you. Perhaps you can get some nectar drops from Rindavan. Radhe Radhe, Gurudev, do you want to share something with us? I just try. <laughs> Gurudev is relishing the reading and that would like you to continue. I repeat the last um, beautiful sentence we read. Um, renunciation is there in the minds of those who are absorbed in these lotus feet. Everything is wasted for someone whose heart does not carry these lotus feet. But a devotee who accepts the mood of the kinkaris will always experience the vicinity, vicinity of these lotus feet. How blissful it is to even think I am close to her.
Swamini has received the nectar of Krishna's lips. The jokes of her sakis crystallize the sweetness of their savor. Tulasi seats Swamini on a stool and washes her mouth. Swamini then holds court with her sakis while a jeweled wick is burning. Tulasi then comes and stands before Swamini carrying a jeweled plate with a self-made battle leaf containing cardamom, ground chatechu, nutmeg, arecha nuts, camphor and cloves. Swamini is absorbed in talking about Shyama with her girlfriends. Tulasi attracts her attention by calling her Madura Gatri, sweet limbed girl. When is she Madura Gatri for the kinkeries? when she is with Shyama. Nothing is as sweet as that. Why is the battle leaf called Param or best? There is a secret in that. Tulasi has secretly mixed some of, of Shyama's leftover pan in it that she had discreetly received from Danishta when she was at Nadishvara earlier in the evening. Danishta knows what is on Swamini's mind. Therefore, she has given these battle leaves to Tulasi. When Swamini catches the fragrance of this palm, she becomes enchanted and possessed with greed. The palm chewed by Madana Mohana is even sweeter than nectar and its scent increases the desire of Swamini's tongue. In Govinda Lilamrita it's written, O Saki, Madana Mohana increases the yearnings of my tongue with his nicely chewed battle leaves that defeat the sweetness of nectar. From Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya Lila 16. I cannot describe the value of the battle leaves that were chewed by Krishna. They are also most proud of being called the essence of nectar and being able to use the gopi's mouth as spit tunes. This pan is the greatest elixir. 
When Swamini smells it, she becomes overwhelmed. It is as if Shyama Sundara has appeared in person. Looking at Swamini, it seems as if she sits there with someone else, hugged against somebody, Krishna. How sweet, how beautiful, how splendid. It is the Bhava service of Bhava Mai by the Bhava Kinkari in the kingdom of Bhava. Without Bhava, this cannot be grasped. The great composer of the Rasa Shastras, Maharishi Bharata Muni has written, when Bhava becomes mature, it attains Rasa Rupata, a form of Rasa. Bhava is understood to mean manovriti or mentality. There are two kinds of faculties of the mind. Here, I think it is also very, very important to understand here why the betel leaves are so much praised. And I think also, like I was speaking with Gurudev yesterday, the superiority and the very special position of the manjaris again is here nicely shown because quite, quite honestly, only they know why the betel leaves are so, so special to Swamini because like we heard now from Baba, that they they contain already the prasadam of the Supreme Lord, of her beloved. So Swamini, when she eats these betel leaves, it is as would it as it is as would their lips touch each other. So when Swamini is eating these betel leaves, it's like she is kissing uh, Krishna. So therefore, this is so much. Therefore, it's called the greatest and the highest. So that's the secret in these betel leaves. And I think not, I think there's only this secret, only know the manjaris. And this is again the beautiful, beautiful position. Again, our, our supreme uh, fortune to hear this and to listen this because who else knows what is really there in the, in the betel leaves, which is Radharani chewing. She is not chewing leftovers, you know, that there are lying some betel leaves. No, 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 no. The manjaris, they mix in already chewed from Krishna so that again their lips can meet. So this is a great, great secret only the mantras know and now by the grace of Baba and Gurudev we know. <laughs> now here in the Leela, Swamini not even eat it. Not yet. She just smelled it. And already going mad, no? going like in a swarm. No? Like she feels already so close to him. She leaning to him, but he is not there. No, it looks like she leaning on him. So the smell, the smell, the smell is bringing Krishna there. So we can imagine how powerful the spiritual world is. Only the smell of, of Krishna's mouth, of his lips, are making like a, a cinema, you know, are making like a vision to Swamini as Krishna is already there. So the smell, that, that is what is called when you, when you realize, you hear Krishna, you see Krishna and you smell him. First is Rupa and then he comes to, he comes to you. You can, you can see him, you can... You can see him from afar and then you can smell. So these, all these items are so powerful that we cannot even understand. We can understand powerful smells in the material world. Yes. But here we can see that the smell, 
of Krishna's lips. It's, it's, it's just chewed leftovers from Krishna. It's actually Krishna Prasadam is so powerful for Swamini that she already sees him. And why? The interesting point is also why is she able to see him? Because she is the personification of Mahabhav. She has Madanakya Mahabhav. So everything which is reminding her of the Lord is making her in ecstasy. So what if, if she is in ecstasy when she sees black trees? So we can imagine how much an ecstasy is when she smells leftovers from Krishna's mouth. So this is extremely powerful. And I want to add something more. You explained so nice the extraordinary position of the manjari. Before we are reading that Tulasi Manjari calls her, oh, sweet limp girl. No? When Radharani become sweet limp girl for the kingdom, when she is together with Shyam. So that also only the Manjaris can experience. Because only in the Nikunja, her limbs become visible. <laughs> and only in the Nikunja, Nivriti Nikunja, the Manjaris can be there. Sakis cannot be there. Usually Radharani, she is pious, no, Koish, what is Koish, in English, Koish, chest, 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 chaste, 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 chaste. chaste. Is rarely to see her feet is covered by the skirt. She wearing a veil no? around and cover her hair most of the time. No other male can see her like this. No? Looking down when she is moving in the night. <laughs> but when she is going in the kunja. She opened more, huh? but in the Nivritini Kunja, her limbs become visible. But only Manjaris can see them <laughs> when she is with Shiva. Extraordinary position of the Manjari. We explain. Rade. It is the Baba service of Baba Mai by the Baba Kinkari in the kingdom of Baba. Without Baba, this cannot be grasped. The great composer of Sarasa Shastras, Maharishi Bharata Muni, has written. When bhava becomes mature, it attains rasa rupata, a form of rasa. Bhava is understood to mean manovriti. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm repeating too much. Our oh, mentality. Uh, I just continue, sorry. <laughs> There are two kinds of faculties of the mind. This is the a mind. good point. My yoga shakti is so nice that you repeat that point because there's <laughs> one more. There's one more point in this line. You see, when bhava is maturing, it becomes form. So the feeling, the feeling we have, like in Sadakadeha, when we move to the stage of bhav, the spiritual form, the siddhadeha becomes visible. So here. Baba is saying that when Baba matures, it becomes a form, Baba Rupata, it becomes a form of path. So this is also 
our spiritual body right now i cannot see and realize my spiritual body but if half matures that means if my realization or if my journey comes to that point when i reach the stage of half i constantly live as my spiritual body it becomes a form and i can realize it and see it in fact really see it so there are many levels of what baba is writing and this is one of those levels when baba matures we can experience nicely our spiritual body but not you know this is yeah it it must mature that means we we prolong our way of bhakti our sad raganuga sadhana by the mercy of gurudev and when our bhav matures we realize our siddha there this is also a very deep deep point in that line i'm glad that you repeat it bhava is understood to mean manovriti or mentality there are two kinds of faculties of the mind the manifest and the unmanifest when the manifest thoughts dwell in the mind it is called manovriti and when the unmanifest thoughts are there it is called samskara vasana bhava or bhavana when this devotional samskara takes a place in the heart by the grace of the saints all will be understood experienced and relished yeah honestly i try to understand it i was reading it two times three times i not clearly under- understood that but i can give one idea but i'm asking for better explanation of the subject like tarun baba say this is very important subject i'm also agree very good that you repeat that uh, my your worship so there are two kind of faculties of the mind one is manifest and unmanifest so the manifest is called manovriti i understand like that that as our conscious thoughts that is what we are aware of what is going on in our minds and then there is something deeper unmanifest like our bhava our mood our motivation it looks for me to me this is like more the foundation if i'm a greedy person no if my foundation is greed in life then my thoughts will be thinking of how to get something how to enjoy something this and that but the unmanifested attitude my foundation my mood my approach is the foundation of what is going on in my mano vritti in my conscious process of thinking desiring and this and that so the unmanifest the foundation the deeper thing is called samskara or bhava so we have sometimes from previous life a samskara or deep impression in our hearts already for devotional service or for bhakti or a mood of service so coming from that foundation our manifest thoughts processing thinking everything going around or connected with our 
foundational or deeper mood. So Baba writing here when the bhava, the samskaras in our mind become mature, deepen. Our mood is fixed, the stai bhava is coming. Then we can experience and relish. And also in the manifested uh, faculty of the mind, our thinking, desiring, doing this and that, it's also connected with this deeper thing. Everything goes around how to serve Radharani. All this thinking, what I can do, what I can serve, what I can do. So that is my understanding, but it came Chief. something after three, four times of reading. I'm asking for a better explanation. Uh, Mayoka Shakti, please read what Baba, Baba is giving the explanation. The last, maybe the last or the last before sentence Baba is, is saying, can you read again? <coughs> He is saying that he's. I think he's giving the answer there already. So you want that I repeat or that I go, yeah. go on? I repeat, no, 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 uh, no. Repeat. La maybe last or one before last. Let me hear. Yeah. Bhava is understood to mean manovriti or mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are two kinds of faculties of the mind. The manifest and the unmanifest. When the manifest thoughts dwell in the mind, it is called manovriti. And when the unmanifest thoughts are there, it is called samskara, vasana, bhava or bhavana. When this devotional samskara takes a place in the heart, by the grace of the saints, of the saints, all will be understood, explained there you have it. and read. There you have it. So there you have it. There is the answer. This is the easy answer. It's all grace like the always saying all is by Kripa. So this has to take place in the heart. This process, this unmanifest process has to take place in the heart by the Kripa of the saints. It's no other way, no other way, no other way. We cannot do it on our own. It will never take place in our heart on our own. Baba is clearly saying here, this can only take place in the heart by the, the, the grace, that means the creeper of the saints. And this is Guru Shastra. This is what everyone is saying. This can only manifest, the manifest thought is there, but the unmanifest bhav can only be manifested in the heart in a descending process coming down from parampara, from the lotus feet of the saints, in our case, of our Gurudev and your Gurudev, Otherwise, like Gurudev is always saying, this one verse in the Chaitanya Charmi Tamrita, no effort, that we, I don't know the Bangla words, but no effort can, can be there. You know, we always have to depend on the grace. We can do sadhana as much as we like, but without the Kripa, it will not yield fruits. And here Baba is giving, I just wanted to hear this sentence. Baba is saying, it can only be placed in the heart by the grace of the saints. Maybe I can say something. Uh, in this connection, actually, all mentality, material mentality, and spiritual mentality, Manovri, depends on Sangha. Which kind of Sangha we have in our present life, or we had in the previous lives, this kind of mentality is stucking on our subtle body, or mind, even heart. We say Chitta. So, like Baba is saying, and Gorachandra and Tarun emphasizes this, that actually mentality depends, spiritual mentality, spiritual mentality depends on the association of sadhus. 
And for that, we need that association to develop our mentality. But also this kind of mentality is specific mental culture, which is also, if it's spiritual, under the influence of spiritual association, that this mentality is like a mental culture, and this mental culture is something which helps, which is the sign of spiritual eagerness. In material life is the same thing. If we are under the influence of strong materialistic persons, strong materialistic values in the life, we build mental culture. And this is desire. Desires is something which brings and build mental culture or mentality. So in both cases, this Sangha is important and also emotions are very important. Because if my emotions doesn't react on something, my mind will not create mentality for that. But if my emotions are very attached for material or for spiritual, then mentality will be created automatically in my mind and my, in my heart. So this deep connection, tight connection, we can say, between emotions and association builds mentality which is suitable for fulfilling our material desires or eagerness or to fulfill our subtle spiritual desires. And it's very interesting that these spiritual desires, Baba is saying here, is unmanifested. They are deeply rooted in the heart, impressed in the heart, like some scars. And suddenly when devotee or person, not devotee, person hears something about Krishna consciousness in general way, he feels attraction. This attraction is the sign of samskara, which is the result of impression from the heart of saintly person in this life, or maybe who knows when, in which life. So this, for me, is um, somehow important that we always should be aware with whom we are associate, because this association creates our mentality or maneuver it. So I just wanted to... Yeah, this is, this is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful point. Thank you so much. Very important point. Yeah, I agree also. Very nice. You also can see on that point, if it's not connected with the heart, if we don't get deep impressions in our... If we don't get deep samskaras from a rasika Vaishnava, Maybe we can build up a mentality of being devotee, but it will be artificial over time. We will build up a mentality of following rules and regulation, but if the impressions of the great saints of Gurudev not reaching our heart, then everything will be artificial only. That's my opinion. Tulasi attracts Swamini's attention because now she is in the kingdom of Leela. Where, where has her mind gone? The Sakis know it and Swamini speaks with them in that mood. That's why the word Vaktrambuya is used here in the text. A speaker is called Vaktra. Tulasi calls out Ai Madura Gatri, calling Swamini back to reality. 
and Swamini, who is greedy after their fragrance, eagerly stretches out her hand to grab the battle leaves from her jeweled plate. What a wonderful expertise in devotional service. Swamini has stopped speaking with her sakis just to put my battle leaves in her mouth. As soon as Tulasi offers the battle leaves, she cannot see Swamini's mouth anymore. The transcendental revelation disappears from Srila Raghunatha Dasa and he laments out of great grief. From Sri Haripada Shila. O sweet form Dradi, O young adolescent girl, your maidservant has goose pimples of ecstasy on her skin. When she offers battle leaves, with camphor to your lotus mouth. When can I serve you in this way when the time is right? Here ends the verse 52. And I just repeat the verse. O oh, Madura Gatri, sweet limbed girl, when will my hair stand on end of ecstasy when I place a battle leaf with camphor, chatishu, cloves, and guvak into your lotus-like mouth? Guru Dev! Some sweet words from you in the end, <laughs> please. <laughs> now, okay, now Gurudev has some guests, but he's thinking of you and listening. You know? Thank you all so much for this beautiful sharing. Please, but if somebody wants to uh, yeah, give some more drafts, <laughs> I have to say again that I like so much this point from our dear Gora Sundara from really, really, this is such an important point. We can all realize, he says, materially and spiritually, whom we associate with is doing the impressions in our mind. And this is always when, when Rupa Goswami is writing this, I so many times said about that verse, this Sajati and Snikta Sangha is utmost important. So we really need not just any Sangha. It, we need two kind two the attributes are there adjective in German. There are two attributes of our Sangha, Sachati and Snikta. So everybody of us, we know how it feels when you associate with someone and you feel not good afterwards, that was not a Snikta association and also not a Sachati. So what means Sachati? Sachati means Associate with those who have the same direction of your life. This means materially, you cannot, if you want to study for lawyer, you, it's not really helpful if you associate with doctors. So in the spiritual world, it's the same. If you want to have association in the Satchati, that means you should be like us, like us here now. We are all moving in the same direction to become kinkaris of Swamini. So this is Sachati Sangha. And then there is one more, even more important point, because the first one is clear. Now we have the first check, you know, check Sachati, we have to be checked. So this is the same direction. But also we should have association of those who love us and we love them. And they should be loving. So not harsh, not rude, not condescending, not energy stealing. So this is the very, very important point. Snikta means those who are of a loving nature and you feel that. When you associate with these persons, you feel wonderful afterwards. You don't feel 
bereft of your energy, you feel wonderful. So snikta means those who are always there for your well-being, who give you very much well-being and energy and love. So these two kinds is so much important in spiritual life that we have this, that, you know, even, even your partner, your brother, and, and in the spiritual family, this Sachati thing, this Stai Bhav, we all should have the same direction. And another point, loving. This loving association, respectful, and, and, and in a loving attitude, not, not competition, not conflict. So Rupa Goswami, you know, he is always using his words. You know, he is, he is empowered by Mahaprabhu. He always uses his words very, very, very consciously. So he uses these two words for our benefit for all time. So this is like a huge rule when you talk about Sadhu Sangha. These two points, they must be there. Otherwise, it's not, it's not helpful. So we are happy. I am happy that I can associate with people who are on the same way and who are loving. And this is our good fortune. This is so important. Jai Rati.